Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, my name is Casey and today I'm going to be sharing my favorite cozy wintertime recipes with you guys. I just did my February reset video where I talked a little bit about getting through the winter blues. I live in Jersey City, I work in New York City. It had been literally two weeks without sunlight here. <laughs> the sun finally came out this weekend, thank goodness. Um, but yeah, I think the winter months tend to be a little bit hard for me. The days start to merge together and you need some Something to look forward to and one thing that I really look forward to is cooking with Ryan trying new recipes or just cooking meals for ourselves that kind of warm us up make us feel cozy and happy and the recipes that I'm going to share with you today are some recipes that we have on our constant rotation because we love them so much so I split these up into three categories we have soups and stews we have pasta and then we have like a miscellaneous section and I'm going to put all of the links in the description below so that you guys can have easy access to all of these recipes and hopefully you'll try them and love them too we're starting off very strong with soups and stews. I'm gonna move over here so you guys can see what I'm talking about over here. But we're kicking things off with the spicy white bean stew from Allison Roman. This is a recipe up on the New York Times and this is the recipe that changed me I'm a changed woman after trying this recipe after my old roommate Marcella made it for me. It is a spicy white bean stew. It has broccoli rob, cannellini beans. It has a little bit of spice to it. Marcella adds a little bit of wine as well. And it is just, uh, it's so hearty. It's so warm. It is one of my all time favorite recipes. I was someone that didn't, I wasn't really a huge soup person because I just never made it at home. I would eat it canned or I would eat it out of a jar. And the difference between making soup at home or eating it from a can is crazy. <laughs> it really is. So once I had this soup, I feel like I was changed. I love making soups and stews now. It's one of me and Ryan's favorite things to cook at home. And so if you're looking for a starter recipe that's really just gonna hit it on the head, I recommend this one. Next up is Ina's Ultimate Beef Stew. This is a this is a big recipe. She's a big mama. <laughs> um, I did this for a Christmas party and Marcella did it for a Christmas party that we had in the past too. It's just been a Christmas party hit. Um, but it is just a big warm stew. It has short rib in it. It's got potatoes, it's got peas, and it really just feels so great. When I made it for our Christmas party, one of my friends, Steph, was like, this this tastes like home, I could cry. Um, and my other coworker, Peyton, texted me. When I told him I was making this video, he was like, you better have the stew in there. I think about it every day. So it really is just an incredible recipe. It makes a lot, and it's also just really easy to make. This was something, when we had our Christmas party, I didn't wanna have to be cooking and worrying about entertaining people and having something on the stove. So this was something that I made earlier on in the day, and then it just sat on the stove warming and it was ready when everyone arrived and that was it. It was so easy to make, but the payoff was incredible and it was a huge hit. Next up is a tomato soup recipe that is maybe Ryan's favorite recipe that I make. He asked me to make this like once a week and we are actually making it today. Um, sometimes we'll pair it with a grilled cheese. Today we're pairing it with a Caesar salad and some homemade croutons. Um, but this tomato soup recipe I just came across on TikTok. A creator shared her mom's recipe for it and I've made more complicated tomato soup recipes and I have to say that this one is my favorite. It's truly as simple as just having those whole peeled tomatoes, just a big old can of them, some sugar, some butter, onion, basil, immersion blend it all up and it is just and I also think that homemade croutons are such a great way to elevate a dish at home. It is my favorite part <laughs> whenever we make soups or salads and I make the homemade croutons. I don't know why I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that croutons are just bread cut up and put in the oven. I remember the first time Marcella showed me how to make homemade croutons. I was like, huh? Like this is so easy. I've been buying them out of the bag for what feels like $8. I feel like they're always outrageous, but Anyways, um, they're so easy to make at home. I typically do some olive oil, some um, garlic powder, onion powder, sometimes a little bit of paprika if I want a little, a little kick in there. And I'll put them in the oven at 400 degrees. I'll start at like five minutes and then I'll just keep checking in on them until they're nice and crispy. And you can top a soup with them, a salad. You can just snack on them. Like I put the leftover ones in a, in a, in a little Ziploc bag and I just snack on them the next day. They're great. Okay, quick little kitchen tour while we get our tomato soup going. We've got our magnetic knife strip over here, which is a game changer for small spaces. 
dishes. I have croutons that are about to go in the oven. This is my little like happy space for the kitchen. So I have my little like say holder with our spatulas and all that stuff. I just got an iPad, which I have done a ton of videos on, um, but I've been slowly moving all of my recipes into my iPad in GoodNotes. This is Flourish Planner's um, template. And then we've got the tomato soup cooking over here. We're gonna immersion blend it for the next step and I cannot wait. A trick that I love for soup season is buying these little chicken broth concentrate packages or like the Better Than Bouillon or something like that. These are so easy to just throw in with the boiling water instead of having to buy like a chicken stock box every single time you wanna make a recipe. Here's our spread. Tomato soup, Caesar salad, and a nice little sandwich. Next up is a sopa de lima recipe that Marcella kind of put together from a bunch of different recipes. But sopa de lima is a delicious, brothy, limey soup. You can put some corn in there, some chicken in there. You can really do whatever you want, but I think Marcella's really got this combination down packed. It's so delicious. It is one of my favorite recipes to make when I come back from a trip. I feel like a lot of the times when I come back for a trip, I've been eating so much on the trip. I really just need a vegetable or I just want something kind of warming that feels like a reset. And this soup just really always, always hits the spot. We always switch up what we top it with, but we'll usually do some avocado, a little bit of sour cream and a side of tortilla chips. Next up is a butternut squash, sweet potato and red lentil stew. And this this one surprised me because I'd say that I'm not a huge butternut squash or even sweet potato person, but there's something about the squash, sweet potato and spices coming together in this soup that just make it, I think it is, is topped. It's probably the warmest, coziest soup on this list. So if you're gonna make one, I would probably make this one. And I think that the flavors are also so different from just regular soup that you like a chicken noodle soup you know um it's very different it's very warm and hearty i love it moving on to the pasta category our all-time favorite recipe in general but definitely in the pasta category is the spicy pesto a la vodka from half-baked harvest it's your classic vodka sauce but then you're also adding pesto into the mix which adds this herby deliciousness we also like to make mushrooms with this so you cook the mushrooms typically a shiitake mushroom is what i prefer so you cook up the shiitake mushroom put those to the side make the sauce and everything and then add the mushrooms back in at the end and they really just soak up the sauce. I recommend making this pasta with a rigatoni, like a big, big old thick rigatoni. And I also recommend, Marcella taught me this, taking them, like draining them right when they're almost done cooking, but not quite yet so that they finish cooking in the sauce and they soak in the sauce while they finish cooking. We also love to eat this with leftovers, a cold noodle, like a cold rigatoni. I'm someone that likes cold leftovers, but specifically this one, even if you don't like cold leftovers, I would recommend trying it. There's something about like the sauce and the thick pasta. It's just, ah, uh, it's so, wake up the next morning and just like, oop, get a little rigatoni and it's so good. Next on the list is the sun-dried tomato, chicken and orzo, also from half bake harvest what i love about this one is that it is a one it's truly a one skillet dish so on top of it being delicious you only have to wash one pan my parents for my birthday got us the stop like large cast iron pan it's one of the best gifts i've ever gotten we use it every single day and it's great for just like getting a crispy chicken for doing a dish like this because you can take it from the stove straight to the oven so this is an orzo base there's like creaminess to it there's chopped up sun-dried tomatoes there's spinach we also add um, or I prefer to do chicken thighs instead of chicken breast I just feel like they have more flavor and they go really well with the recipe this next one is if you're looking for something that's really easy if you don't have a lot of time and you don't want to do a jarred pasta sauce um, but you still want it to be really easy it is a brown butter um, pesto ravioli and again Marcel I'm just gonna talk about Marcella this entire <laughs> video long she's the one who made me love cooking she's the one who taught me pretty much everything that I know and now I'm sharing it with you guys so thank you marcella um but this uh brown butter pesto ravioli essentially you can just go to trader joe's or your local grocery store and just buy the pre-made raviolis or the pre-made um tortellinis that take like two minutes to boil um and while you do that you're just gonna throw some butter into a little pot brown it add some pesto in there add it into your ravioli, mix everything together, throw some spinach in there if you want and do like a little squeeze of lemon for that just like 
acidic pop and that's it. It is so simple. It takes so, so little time to make, but it is delicious. Next up is from Cafe Haley on TikTok. I love all of her recipes and it is a ditalini with asparagus and peas. I didn't even know what ditalini pasta was before this recipe. And now I think it's one of my favorite pasta shapes. They're just these like little noodles, essentially, kind of like mini rigatonis. Anyways, they're delicious. What I love about this recipe is that yes, it's pasta, but it's also some green greens. You get some vegetables in there and it's like a half to half ratio. She does just asparagus. I think the original recipe is with peas. So we do asparagus, peas, and the ditalini pasta. They're in this just like creamy sauce. And again, it's very easy to make, but the payoff is amazing. Moving on to the miscellaneous category. We're starting off strong with the Cuban picadillo. So this is a recipe. It's actually from my Colombian recipes, but it's a Cuban picadillo. <laughs> um, and my coworker Peyton brought this to work one day and my abuelo used to make picadillo all the time when I was younger. It was one of my favorite recipes that he used to make. And so when Peyton had it, I was like, oh my God, I need the recipe to this. It looks so delicious and it is delicious. It's the closest that I've ever gotten to uh, tasting my abuelos. And I also think for me, it's just so cozy and warm because it's so nostalgic. I feel like those nostalgic dishes, you can't beat them when they just remind you of your childhood or of home. And that's what this dish is for me. A tip that I have for this one that Peyton gave me is to honestly double the spices that she does. Um, I love olives and raisins, so to double those as well. If you're not familiar with what picadillo is, it's basically like a ground beef with tomato paste and some spices, but then there's also raisins and olives, which add that like salty sweet combination. I know it sounds a little bit strange, but if you haven't tried it before, please do. It is one of my all time favorite meals. You typically serve it over a bed of white rice and Cubans, or at least in my family, we also serve it with a chopped up banana. Um, again, I know it sounds strange, but there's something about the sweet and savory that just makes it even better. My mouth is watering as I was talking about that one. Next in miscellaneous, we have Ina's outrageous garlic bread. This garlic bread is actually outrageous. My roommates and I did like a huge lasagna night and we decided to make this garlic bread and it was truly life changing. Changing. Ina has you cut diagonals in both directions on the garlic bread so that it gets the butter and the garlic get into the crevices of the bread and it is just so good. This is something that you can so easily pair with one of the soups that I was talking about with one of the pastas. You can even serve it as a little appetizer if you're having guests over. It's so good. And then last on our miscellaneous are homemade pretzels with queso. And this is a half-baked harvest recipe too. She uses a pumpkin beer for it. We didn't go the pumpkin route. We just went like the plain pretzel route. But my roommates and I did this for a little roomy night. I feel like it would be so fun for a date night or a little party or Galentine's Day. Um, it's so fun to just, you know, hand roll the little pretzels yourself. We did end up making the queso that she has the recipe for, but I will say it was a lot. If making homemade pretzels is enough of a task for you, you can easily make your own homemade queso. Ryan and I do this all the time. You get some pub cheese from Trader Joe's. We like the pub cheese that has the jalapenos in it. And then you also get a can of their cowboy caviar. Dump the two of them together, put them in the microwave for like a minute, mix it together, and it is a delicious queso. And you just dunk your pretzels right in there. So like I said, these are some of our favorite recipes that are in constant rotation here. Let me know down in the comments if you try any of these recipes. I hope that you enjoy them as much as we do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Stay warm. Bye.